Well, I've been here in New Jersey talking about the future of the pharmaceutical industry and what a great challenge it is with regulators breathing down the neck of the pharma industry. Uh, the image is poor. Uh, the press is often hostile. Uh, shareholders are often looking for very short-range returns on an industry which takes 15 years to get a drug to market and another 10 to recover the money. Uh, with, this is an era of, uh, uh, of obsession with safety, of product recalls almost every week, of the destruction of $1 billion of research in, uh, in a moment. And you might say, well, why would anyone want to invest in this at all? Well, the fact is that our world's health budgets are growing. It's not just in developed countries, but it's also in the emerging markets. And we need these solutions to improve our lives. And because of that, there is a continuing pressure on governments, insurance companies, and individuals to continue to pay out. Now, you might say, well, of course, that's what's wrong with the industry. The prices are too high. It's an unsustainable model. But we will continue to see uh, dramatic advances in ways of treating disease, ways which our... Uh, our population so sorely needs. And these will come not mainly from, uh, from publicly funded institutions, but they will come from entrepreneurs, small biotech startup companies, which produce, in the main, which produce the innovations which are then brought into Big Pharma and then maximized uh, and rolled out with big clinical trials and got into the market. So this industry has the potential to be very profitable, but only if it learns how to be more innovative and to make the case that actually decent research is expensive, it takes time to do, it's very complicated. If we want to actually save people's lives and not kill them with, uh, with expensive and toxic treatments, then we need to do it very carefully and very well. Those drug trials take a long time. There are no real shortcuts to be found. And this has to have a decent funding agreement between governments and farmer industry, who after all is owned primarily by pensioners. 75% of all farmer company shares are owned by pension funds. That's your pension today or your pension when you retire. And that means that farmer companies need to be much more bold about the profits that they make and where they go. And to say, most farmer companies have products where 75, 65, 75% of those sales is for those over the age of 65 because that is 75% of the health budget of most developed countries. So most pharma companies exist primarily providing products for older people and for children as well and for other groups, but primarily for older people. That is where the greatest need is and that's where the greatest sales will be over the next 5, 10 or 15 years. And here's a strange paradox. Guess who owns the pharma companies? Mostly older people or people getting close to retirement. So pharma companies are owned primarily by senior citizens and run for the benefit primarily of senior citizens. The capital that senior citizens loan in, or give, if you like, uh, in, the, in, the, in the money they invest into pharma finances generations of new products which take, as I say, up to $1 billion each to get to market. And the returns and profit that's made is the reward to those shareholders, as I say pensioners in the main, for their trust in those companies. It's the pensions which they need, it's the wealth which they need to provide their security for the future. So here is an organisation, here is an industry which is built on the health needs of, of the future, providing uh, products which will improve uh, the quality of life and save lives. At the same time, generating wealth for those who have entrusted their wealth to these companies to invest in these new treatments. It should be a good news story. There's no excuse for the very poor image that there is a pharma, which has sometimes been based on uh, unethical practices and other things that have happened in the past. But the future of pharma needs a joined up conversation, a big conversation between governments, between the public, between regulators, between activist groups, between patients, between doctors, uh, and, and between shareholders and staff and colleagues and research workers, and to say what kind of world do we want to live in, how is this work going to be financed. There are three models for pharma for the future. The first is the traditional model. Big blockbuster drugs produced for developed countries which are impossible for anybody else to afford. The second is the generic model where you have companies that are not paying any patents or royalties who are just rolling these drugs off the conveyor belt and only putting a small amount on for the actual profit that they want to make uh, to cover their own costs and distribution and things like that. Those kind of companies will continue to do very well mainly marketing drugs which are more than 10 years old because it takes 15 years to develop a drug to market, 10 years you have to sell it, 
after 25 years of total R&D, 15 years, 10 years selling, the drug is copyright free and available to be sold around the world at a fraction of the cost. So Cipro, for example, under patent, $5.25 a tablet in New York. Off patent, as a generic, it'll sell for around 35 cents for a single tablet. So the first model, as I say, developed world. Second model is emerging markets and generics. And then the third model, well, it's a combination. It's where a big institution, like the Bill Gates Foundation, goes to a pharma company and says, listen, our world needs this particular drug. I know commercially it may not be viable, and we think that the, the intellectual ownership of this drug should be owned by the whole of humankind. It should go straight into generic manufacturing. We should not seek to recover from those who are sick the royalty payments. So, the Bill Gates Foundation might work with someone like Wyeth or GlaxoSmithKline or Novartis or whoever, and say, we will put money in. We will hire your R&D teams to develop a product that we hope will work. When that happens, we will own the intellectual copyright and we will then give it back to you or to other manufacturers to, de to develop and to sell on a generic basis. There is no copyright, there is no intellectual property, there are no royalties to be paid because we have paid for the research up front. So that's an alternative model. And it would enable uh, drugs to be developed at low cost for the whole of humankind without raising some of the ethical challenges that we've seen recently over things like AIDS drugs and in other sectors.